Welcome to Covent Garden. This is Covent Garden Underground Station, served to you on the Piccadilly line. Actually, if you want to go to Covent Garden, one of the easiest ways is to get out of Holborn and walk, because actually it's about a five minute walk from there above ground. But if you do come here, yes, it has lifts. So we're now gonna take the lift to the street. Now the other thing about Covent Garden is you can get out of Covent Garden, but you can't get in. As you exit Covent Garden, there it is. There is Covent Garden itself, the main market. And as you walk down the street towards it, you've actually got this building here. See this big white building? This is the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. Famous for its international concerts, operas, and various other events put on. The main entrance to which is actually on the corner of Covent Garden, but we'll see that very, very shortly. Okay, so there's a couple of things to know about Covent Garden, one of which is there is street entertainment a lot of the day. This is one of the venues, now this is quite often a smaller venue where you can get up to 100 people around a street entertainer doing all sorts of things, from playing music to doing magic tricks to all sorts of things. The great thing about this is you can sit observe or stand back and observe stand too far forward one thing i promise you you'll be involved of course they don't do this for free so do have some change ready when you come to covent garden because then you'll be able to put that into the hat and not feel guilty that you've watched a good show and not paid a little bit towards the contribution of the street artist and that's where they make their money in 600 ad covent garden was the center of trading town then called Londonwick. Now, as you can see, being here early in the morning, again, is a great way to avoid the crowds. Now, whilst there's hardly anything open, if you want to just come and see the atmosphere, take in the culture, and take in the architecture of Covent Garden Market itself, now is a fantastic time in the day in which to do so. Right, over in the corner there, that is the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden, and that's the entrance to it. So the actual market itself, which we'll walk through in a minute, are a couple of walkways with some lovely shops and also some nice restaurants. Not the cheapest place in which to eat. Originally in 1200, it was a walled garden of Westminster Abbey and Convent, later to become Covent Garden. In the southeast corner, you have the London Transport Museum. Now the London Transport Museum itself is quite large, there's a shop with a cafe in which you can go in for free. Here is a great little hack for you. The cost for an adult for going in is £18, but children aged 17 and under are free. So if you've got a large family, it's worth going in there. So that's the London Transport Museum on the southeast side of Covent Garden. Right, we're now on the south row of Covent Garden itself. And here you've also got the Jubilee Market Hall, which is another little bustling market. Great place to buy souvenirs if you're thinking of getting souvenirs, t-shirts, etc. in London. Another great place to come and get those. In 
1854, a small open air fruit and vegetable market had developed on the south side of the site. Just a little tip. If you're coming down here at lunchtime, the queues are massive and you'll have a long wait as well because so does everyone else. So actually, if you don't want to eat at the time you're coming down here, eat somewhere else, come down and then come and enjoy the atmosphere of Covent Garden. Seized by Henry VIII and given to the Earl of Bedford, in 1552, he arranged for houses to be built on the site. Right, we're now coming on the west side. And this area, just in front of St Paul's Church, with the big overhang, is another major place, and it's probably the major place, where street performers entertain. They entertain here, and lots of people watch from here. So a really, really great place to once again come and see some street entertainment. Right, here's a tip for you. It's up there. Right, so there's a pub here called the Punch and Judy. Entrance is available. You can get to the entrance by going in through Covent Garden Market itself. But the access and the view down onto the street entertainment is fantastic. So a little tip for you, come and do that. Right, so you've got two main parts to the Covent Garden corridor. This is the South Hall. And as you can see here, you've got little shops where you can buy all sorts of little things, souvenirs, etc. But then, down in the middle, at the bottom, some great places to come, sit, have a coffee, and a few more shops down there as well. Now in this alcove down here, once again another place to get food, quite often in this corner just underneath the stairs you'll also get more performers. So if you just love street entertainment, want to come and see a hustling and bustling life, Covent Garden is definitely the place for you. Alternatively, if you just like to take in the scenery like we're doing now, first thing in the morning is also a great place. It starts coming to life here probably about 10 o'clock in the morning and it goes right through till late at night. Right, these square boxes you can all see little kiosks again available to buy souvenirs sweets and various other things so if you've got the children with you plenty to keep them happy as well right this is the central corridor once again with little shops the great thing about these shops is they are accessible from two lots of corridors, either the central corridor or the south or the north corridor. So down there, you've got the Jubilee Market where we've just walked past. And if you walk up this way, you can see just up the top there, the sign for Covent Garden Tube Station. Could be about one of the beautiful things about London, everything is close by. Yeah. Entrance to the Punch and Judy pub to get upstairs and get those great views over the street entertainment. We're now in the North Hall. And this once again, as you can see, within Covent Garden Market itself, you've got the Apple Market, which as you can see is handmade arts and design, which will include things like jewelry. It also includes pictures and posters, caricatures, and lots of other handicraft, which once again, great souvenirs for people if you're taking it home. 
So as you can see also, to the left and the right, more shops. Again, with the central avenue running directly between the different corridors of Covent Garden. So everything's very easy to get access to. My only advice would be, when it's busy down here, it's busy. So if you've got young children with you, just make sure you keep them very, very close to you. Here in front of us we have the Charter of Covent Garden and it tells you what you can and can't do and the bylaws of Covent Garden itself. So it's just slightly hidden off the North Hall of the Apple Market at the far end on the east side. Come and have a look. So that's Covent Garden. One of the last things to show you is this place. Now for many of you out there who like your tech and are Apple fans, there's a massive Apple shop just on the north side of Covent Garden. The reason I tell you this is because everyone flocks to Regent Street Apple Store. This one, there's plenty of space most of the time to come and play with your favorite tech. Just another little tip. Right, hope you've enjoyed today's video on Covent Garden. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember to ring the bell for notifications for videos that we'll be posting on a regular basis on this channel, all around the different places of London, and giving you tips as well. My final thing about Covent Garden, come down early and immerse yourself. You can just have a gentle stroll around. Come down later again when all the shops are open. The difference is unbelievable, but it's amazing how many people come down first thing in the morning just to have some peace, quiet and enjoy the scenery of Covent Garden.